Okay, talking 1986 Penn football with Coach Chris Giesman. Kingsman uh, win the Northern Indiana Conference Championship by two games. Riley finishing second along with Adams, respectively. Kingsman goes 7-0, and 10-1 overall. Coach, let's uh, just reflect back on the 1986 season. 10-1, uh, certainly, compared to what you were at the year before, people were jumping up and down and uh, buying more season tickets now, right? Because you're 10-1. Sure so. Yeah, we... Uh, <laughs> Back then, you only had an eight-game regular season, so uh, and you had to play six in the tournament. So we got to, we were beaten in the finals of sectional by a team that should have won the state. They uh, had Fort Wayne Snyder, and they were one of the better teams we played. Uh, we had a few injuries at that time, and uh, uh, they had uh, Vaughn Dunbar and some others. Hey, they were very, very good. But uh, that was the team that started the 89 game regular season win streak. And it started with an undefeated 1986 season. So that was, uh, that was really, uh, uh, they really did a lot of good things. Quarterback situation, once again, Rich Charlton continues to mature uh, in, in that role. Give us an idea, uh, and I know that in, in talking with uh, with Rich, uh, he just felt that getting some reps early on in his career, and as his career uh, kind of grew on, that uh, he just got more confident. And it sounds like you had more confident, Rich Carlton. Yeah, well, Rich's uh, greatest year was '87. He he led Penn to probably the greatest game Penn's ever played, and the greatest comeback, and so on and so forth. And I think Rich is remembered mostly for his senior year. Uh, we had uh, Jeff Griman, right? Brian's older brother started uh, a lot that year too. And uh, but we wanted uh, the year before we thought Chris Boyer was going to be our quarterback. He wanted to, he had his heart set in playing wide receiver. He did really, so we worked with uh, Jeff and Rich the whole year and. Uh, went back and forth with them, wanting one of them just to really take charge. They didn't quite have the confidence for that yet, but uh, they both played uh, better than 86, and uh, uh, Jeff ended up having a great uh, 86, and, and Rich had a great 87. One of the, I mean, the, the game that we still talk about, and we talk about 87, I can spend a lot of time talking about that game. All right, when well, you look at the, uh, the Northern Indiana Conference All-Team, you mentioned Jeff Griman, uh, Bob Pletcher, Tony Cmac, Randy Schneider was the lineman of the year, Scott Foster, Rob Cook, Darren Curtis, Jack Plummer, Bob Tidy. Bob Tidy. And uh, your second team guys were Al Crookerly and Kobe Krieger. So Krieger. Krieger. Yeah. All right, so let's just talk about some of those all-league guys. Okay. Uh, I tell you, in 86, Bob Pletcher averaged 10 yards a carry. I mean, you're not going to see that much anymore. And uh, as a matter of fact, his big play was what we called stick option. And uh, teams now that stun or have, even have run through linebackers, you can't block it anymore the way you'd like to, to make it look like a trap. So oh, we don't even run that anymore. It's average 10 yards of play in 86. So uh, it, it lasted for a couple more years, and we had to just drop it out because uh, teams that stunned, uh, it would just. It's a long, long story, but anyway, we had we had to drop it out. I well, had Darren Curtis, that had the greatest interview I've ever heard down at Fort Wayne. Our uh, first uh, tournament game was against Fort Wayne Northrop. He was in the backfield the whole night, and he said, "How do you do that?" And Darren said, the "Reporter asked, how 'How'd you get?'" He said, "I got a secret," and the reporter said, "What is it?" And Darren said, "I'm not going to tell you." <laughs> that was that was the interview. <laughs> so, but he was uh, he was a great one. Randy was a great one. All those kids that you mentioned, that was a that was a very good team. And I think that Fort Wayne Snyder team that year was one of the best we ever played in. Uh, you know, not not in the dome. And uh, the reason being, uh, the next week they were ahead of Marion, like 55 to nothing, for, still had their quarterback in the game. Their quarterback got hurt, missed the rest of the season, and they got beaten in the state finals by Carmel, I believe, in overtime. Mm -hmm. And if they and they'd had uh, Carmel scored a couple touchdowns on fumbled quarterback exchanges or something, if they had just 
backed off a little bit once they had a big lead. I think they had another state championship in Fort Wayne, but you never know. I mean, I hate to ever comment on teams that I don't coach because there's things that I don't know about their team. Okay. Thanks.